There are apps and devices that allow you to plan or track your hiking and cycling trips. One of them is Komoot. I've been using Komoot for a few years now to track my trips, but I don't want those memories and milestones to just sit in the app, never to be looked at again. So I decided to bring them to life using my 3D printer to create miniature versions of my trips. Based on the track GPS coordinates, real-world elevation data and some coding, I created a user-friendly flexible add-on with that you can create your own maps for free. I decided to use Blender for this. That's the program my models and animations are created. And the best, it's completely free. At first, let's take a closer look into GPX files. That's a file you can download from your tracking app, website or device. It contains all the points of the path in the form of latitude, longitude, elevation and the time. But you can not only download trails you observed already, you can also download tracks you are planning on those websites. Based on this we can create the path in 3D, but it's still missing the map itself. For that we need to get the elevation data from somewhere else. In this case from opentopodata.org. They offer a free public API which has some limitations like 100 locations per request and a maximum form call per second. But it has the advantage that you don't have to set up anything as a user and I want it to be as user friendly as possible. No API keys no other download and no unnecessary settings. Now it's time to create a hexagon around the path based on the path size. The hexagon is then divided into many smaller triangles. The x and y coordinates of those vertices will be transformed into latitude and longitude, sent over to open topo data, which then returns the elevation of that point and we can apply it to that vertice. Doing that for every point results in a replica of the real-world terrain. It generates two separate STL files that I can now load into my slicer. One of the map and one of the path. I own a Bamboo Lab A1 and that's why I use the Bamboo Slicer. But you can use any slicer and printer that supports multicolor printing. Two hours later the print finished and it looked great. And all that with just a few clicks. But now let's go even further and paint the map in the bamboo slicer. I start by only importing the STL file for the map. Then I select the tool to paint by layer to color the tips of the mountains. Switch to the normal brush and do some manual painting so it looks more natural. It doesn't have to be accurate or high quality. Legs can usually be colored by a fill tool as they are completely flat. Then I'm importing the STL file for the trail and I'm ready to print it. This one looks insane. And as you can see, I have already printed a few different maps. This one is a small 15 km hike I did.
This one is a biking tour around the Kimsi I found on Komoot. Four hundred kilometer Mallorca tour. Or even a 7000 km tour across America. There are almost no limits. The filament I'm using is the Olive Green PLA from Overture. And the other colors are from Elego. I'll link them in the video description if you want to achieve the same results as me. But what if you have multiple single GPX files of a longer tour? One for each day for example. Well, that's something for my Patreon supporters who make projects like this even possible. As a channel supporter, you will be able to select a folder full of single GPX files to create a map of the whole tour. By joining my Patreon, you will greatly support my channel, allowing me to continue releasing future projects like this one for free. And you will get other exclusive files, project updates and mentions in my videos like seen in the intro. You may have already noticed that some of the maps are slightly different. This variation is due to the customization options available in the add-on. Let's take a closer look at the add-on itself. Inside Blender, once installed, you can press N to open up the sidebar. Under the Trail Print 3D tab you can see all the parameters you can change. The first one is the file path of the GPX file you want to load. The export path is where your exported STL file will be saved. Trail name is the name of the exported file as well as the display text for some variations. You can choose from a few shapes like a octagon, a circle or a hexagon. And some experimental shapes like a hexagon with outer text that contains the trail name, the length, the traveled altitude and how long the trail took. These values will be calculated by the add-on and don't require additional input. The same with a hexagon with inserted text. It's just slightly above the terrain. This one looks great, but the mountains make it hard to read it, so this one fits better on flatter terrains. But some shapes like the circle, the ellipse or the octagon will be exclusive for Patreons. The object size is the size of the finished map in millimeters. Higher resolution means a higher quality, but exponentially longer generating times because of the API limits. A hexagon with the resolution of 6 takes about 3 minutes, while a resolution of 7 takes about 10 minutes to generate. I recommend using a maximum value of 6 or 7. The elevation scale allows you to add a multiplier to the terrain elevation. Use it to make flat maps more interesting or to smooth down steep landscapes. The path thickness determines how thick the path will be. The path scale determines how big the path will be inside of the map. A value of 1 means the path is as big as the map, which is not really recommended. A value of 0.5 means that it's only half the size of the map. I generally like 0.7, but it depends on the trail. The shape rotation allows you to rotate the map. Useful for unusual shapes like the heart. Override path elevation. This one is a bit special. I have tested quite a few trails from Komoot and sometimes it seems that the elevation from Komoot has an offset to the real world elevation. As you can see here, the path is floating in the air. If you check this box, it will ignore the elevation from the GPX and fetch the elevation for each point from OpenTopo data. The generation will take longer and that function is only necessary if you have that offset. Keep in mind that some things may be different in the future, as it's currently just the first iteration of the add-on. To install the add-on you need the most recent Blender version. Then go to Edit and then Preferences. A new window will open. Go to the Add-ons tab. Now click the tiny arrow and press Install from disk. Select the Trailprint 3D file you downloaded from the video description and confirm. Now you can close the pop-up window. And if your sidebar isn't showing, press N. And if everything worked, you should see the Trailprint 3D tab here. Now you're all set to create your own maps. What you do with them is entirely up to you. Frame them on the wall, piece them together into a mosaic of your adventures, or turn them into stands that showcase your milestones. The links in the description will contain detailed instructions on how to download and use the add-on. 
And if you are still watching, follow me on Instagram because sometimes I post there as well. That's it for this project, see you on the next one.